Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a compact seven and one quarter inch table saw. This is a homemade build. Obviously it is using a seven and one quarter inch circular saw that I bought for $50. It includes a fence and, and I've got two miter tracks in it. It's got everything you need in a table saw, but best of all, it's really easy to take on the road with you. Just unclamp it, pick it up, and move it. It's nowhere near as heavy as my rigid job site table saw, including the fence. This is going to be a really big build, so let's get to it. So this is the cheapest saw that I could get my hands on. It's a $50 circular saw. The good old Skill brand and the circular saw and Skill saw have become kind of names that were kind of interchangeable throughout the last 30 years or so. It does all the basic stuff that I need it to do. It's corded of course. It comes with an 18 TPI blade which is going to be terrible. I know that already so I'm not going to use that. I'm going to swap it out for this seven and one quarter inch, which will work a little bit better. And that's it. We're in business. Okay, I've cut my miter slots in the table saw surface. What I kind of did was I went off, one side is four inches from the blade, the other side is about six inches from the blade. That's approximately the specs for my rigid table saw. Does it need two miter slots? Probably not. You could go with just one and that's probably more than enough. You saw me use my plunge router to widen the slot here to a quarter inch to give the blade a little bit of breathing space on either side. What happens is if you just plunge the blade straight through, and I've seen this on many homemade table saw builds where they plunge the blade straight through the board and leave it at that. If the blade touches the sides at all, it causes this friction effect. And if you get that friction effect, you'll know right away when you're trying to cut something because your offcut piece will go flying back at you. You'll get that slingshot effect that you don't want. A reason why throat plates for factory table saws are usually about six to eight times wider than the actual blade thickness. There is a safety purpose behind that. In this particular case, going completely to zero would be kind of hazardous. 
with this type of blade and this type of setup. I don't recommend it. The, the trickiest part to building your own table saw is making sure that the blade is square to the edges of the board on either side so that you don't have to think about it. When I do build the fence, it's gonna be a T-square quick lock fence similar to what I did with my bandsaw. The next step in the process now is to better secure the saw underneath the table. Now, of course, I've secured it with two screws in the front and the back, but that does not satisfy me. I wanna make sure that those screws don't come loose while I'm operating this. And the last thing you want to happen is the saw to drop out from under you while you're using it. Also, you wanna make sure that it's easy to take in and out and square up instantly when you put it back in. So what I'm going to make is a mounting shoe that will keep the saw in place.
The fence is really easy to work with. All I do is place it right down, pull on the front, and lock it at the back. And that keeps the fence nice and square instantly. So I don't have to think about it. I don't have to worry about it. As long as I pull on the front uh, on the T-square part and then lock it into place, it stays where I want it and it stays square. Using my $6 power bar, I've got my on-off switch. I've got a place to coil the power cord so it's not hanging down or in the way or it doesn't get caught on anything. The saw blade is very easy. I just hit the release on what's basically the back of the saw and raise it up or down depending on my stock. It goes up quite a ways. That's about the maximum right there. So I can probably cut about an inch and three quarters reliably, which is more than enough for most jobs. I don't have time in this video to do the miter gauge. I'll do that in a separate video because that's something that might apply to all table saws if you're missing a miter gauge. But this fence is going to be pretty handy. It's got the T-track cut into it so that I can put on a feather board or attach a jig to this. So that's going to come in handy. It's not a factory table saw, but out of everything it has going for it, it does exactly what I need in a small compact contractor saw. So I'm pretty happy with it. The motor is a 13 amp, of course. Um, so it's not a spectacular circular saw, but it's more than powerful enough to handle most of the jobs. Yeah, you just saw me cut a couple of pieces of tough white oak on this and it had no problem getting through it. It is more compact than my contractor table saw because I can throw this in the back of the truck much easier and bring my saw horses along, which I would probably normally bring anyway. So it reduces the amount of stuff that I have to bring to a job site or if I'm helping somebody out somewhere, this is the saw I can bring to do some of the work. Unless I'm doing a major construction job, I don't need to lug that bigger contractor saw with me. This saw will definitely do the trick. Well, that concludes building a compact table saw for your workshop. Now, of course, in the past, I haven't really advocated building your own table saw. I've seen many table saw builds. So what I've tried to do is build the safest version of a home build table saw that I could come up with. Is it something that I would use long term as a table saw? No. This is designed to be a portable tool that you can take on the road with you. In my case, I just want to be able to pick it up and take it into the backyard where I'm doing some work and be able to use it on a couple of saw horses. Again, this does not take the place of a factory made table saw. If you can afford a factory made table saw, please buy one. I know DeWalt makes a great eight and one quarter inch saw that I actually might purchase at some point. That is all the blade you need. I've advocated this in the past. In my other table saw, it only has a seven and one quarter inch. 60 tooth blade. In terms of plans, if you want to see plans for this, let me know in the comments below. I will be working on some. Depending on the demand for these plans, I'll try and fast track them if I can. I've got a lot of other plans to develop and post on my website. Check the link in the description below. You'll see the full list of plans that you can download and purchase on my online store. If you want to support this channel, head on over to my donation page right over here. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. There are a couple more videos on this side you can watch. Until next time, thanks for watching, and have a great day.